in not on the winning side of the toss today, uh, but you have a chance to spoil the fortunes of the Jamaicans in terms of their 100% win record. How's your move in the Guyana Cup? I mean, all the girls are any changes for this game? Yeah, we have a um, bar climb out and um, we have a uh, we have a uh, we have a uh, well the news from the centre is that Jamaica women they have won the toss and they have decided to back first teams would force Jamaica in an unassailable position uh, in this uh, final round of matches. They are on 24 points and uh, the team of course can catch Jamaica so uh, you could safely say that they would have won this tournament. Um, the next place team, of course, uh, would be Barbados, who um, are on 14 points. Guyana, uh, who is playing here, they are on 13 points. Uh, but a quiet start there uh, by the Jamaican team. Just to take a, a quick look at the teams, uh, the lady who is batting. Stefani Taylor, the captain. Rashada Williams, she's the one of the openers and also the wicketkeeper for the J the Jamaican team. Uh, there's Abigail Bryce, Natasha McLean. Uh, Wilmot has been left out today, and we have Vanessa Watts, uh, Kenesha Ferron. Nisha and Wesom and uh, Janelle Diaz, she's into the Jamaican team uh, for this match. She did not play in the last one. And uh, we also have Shadeen Nation and uh, Jessica Garcia, she's also in the team today. Uh, so, uh, two changes to the Jamaican team today. And uh, uh, there's also Lena Scott, who's in the Jamaican team. Uh, so we have Wilmot being left out um, from the last game. Um, Chanel Henry took a hat trick in the uh, last game. Uh, she is not playing today. I suspect that she is being rested as the first over comes to an end. It's a maiden. Uh, so Chanel Henry perhaps being rested, perhaps. Well, she seemed to be limping a bit in the last match. And uh, Jamaica in a, in a very good position, uh, no doubt. Uh, resting Chanel, Ed, Chanel Henry. And uh, giving chances to uh, uh, players uh, like Scott and Diaz. So we have had one over. And uh, just to look at the uh, Ghana team, Campbell, of course, is the captain. Um, Shemaine Campbell. Vice captain, of course, is Gajna B. Uh, we time Wetima. Wetima. Uh, Trisha Hardat, Kizia Schultz, Nayela Latchman, Ashmini Munsa, uh, Ashinita Grimond, Liliana Grimond, keeper of course. Uh, in this match is interestingly uh, well, Ma Mandy Mangu and uh, Well, Mandy Bangu, of course, is in the team. 
uh, uh, today as a wicket keeper. I'll confirm that in a while. And, uh, And uh, Millington is the, the other player for uh, the guy in his team. Captain, of course, um, is at mid-off. She's taking a break today. In fact, that mid-off is uh, uh, Guimon, uh, Reliana Guimon, one of the two uh, Guimon sisters. Because she the air from extra cover and uh, allowing the batters to get a single. Uh, so that one coming off the hands of Millington, who is that extra cover. So she may and Campbell, the captain today, is that slip. See, she has given the gloves to Manny Mango, who's keeping wicket today. Officials, of course, in this match, Candice Laborde, uh, she is at square leg at the moment, and uh, the other one, Maria Abbott, who is the presiding umpire, and then we have Ayana Holder, the third umpire, with our good friend Thelma Gums uh, being the match referee. So the second run comes up with a wide. Conditions here slightly overcast. Uh, but we have had a prompt start. So Guyana employing uh, with Foretti Meyer. Oh, that's a good one. It seemed to have pitched just uh, just outside the half stump and moving slightly away uh, from um, the right-handed uh, person and, uh, and, and uh, going through to the keeper. So, a good start by the guy on the team. So Millington will continue from the far end. Of course, Rashada Williams, who is coming off a good knock in the last match, uh, innings of some, some 70 plus runs. Gets the first boundary down to square leg. That's a good shot. Sweeping down to uh, square leg for four. So, uh, the first boundary of the Jamaican innings and the first boundary to uh, Williams, to Rashad Williams. A good shot. Swept down to square leg for four. Of course, there's no pressure on uh, the Jamaican team, uh, knowing, of course, that they are way out in front and uh, cannot be caught easily in terms of uh, points. Track being used today, the same track as um, the one that was used for the 
last match. Millington once more. Nice shot to backward point, but unable to uh, pierce the field. And no run. So we have had three overs completed, and uh, Jamaica after winning the toss, six on no a loss. And Guyana starting fairly well. All the matches being played today, of course, uh, in this final round, round four of the uh, CG United Super 50. Uh, Guyana takes on Trinidad and Tobago at the Economy Cricket Center. And Barbados playing the Leeward Islands at Warner Park. In fact, um, that was round four fixture I was giving you. It's, in fact, in fact round five. Loud appeal, the finger goes up, and Ferron is on away. So we look at that one again. Seem to have taken it, uh, edged it to, to the keeper, uh, Mangu, and she took it well, and Ferron is making her way back. Uh, so she goes rather cheaply, and uh, Guyana drawing first blood. So let me just get it right this time. The round fives uh, today, Trinidad and Tobago would play against the Leeward Islands at Warner Park. Guyana is playing against Jamaica here at the St. Paul Sporting Complex. And Barbados takes on the Windward Islands at the Connery uh, Cricket Center. But, of course, most of these matches uh, uh, mainly academic, of course, teams would be looking to enhance their uh, position in the uh, table standings. As nation goes to the quiz. So just to uh, remind listeners, our viewers, uh, uh, Jamaica on 24 points from the previous four matches, Barbados on 14, um, Guyana on 13, Winwards on 10, Leewards 2, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, no points. And of course, Leewards picking up those two points, scoring over uh, 200 runs against Barbados on Wednesday. So, I'm pretty certain that teams like Barbados, uh, Guyana, the Winward Islands, they would be looking to enhance their position. And, uh, of course, uh, Barbados 14 points, Guyana 13, Winwards uh, 10. And there would be, each of these three teams would be looking to move up the table. Just to remind us that this is a, a CG United sponsored women's super, uh, West Indies Super 50 over match, and we are in the final round, the fifth round. Of course, uh, it is co sponsored also by Daffabet. 
prices, of course, for the Super 50. First price, 20,000. And uh, second price, 10,000. So, lots to play for, for, for some of these teams still. Uh, you're looking to get into second position. And uh, uh, certainly for Pride, of course, uh, even though they might not have won the tournament, at, at least they, they would have, they would be happy uh, coming in, 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 a, in a good position, a placing well in this tournament as another over is completed. One of the problems, though, uh, is that teams, they, they have not really been uh, batting the, the 50 overs. Uh, incentives are offered in terms of bonus points uh, for team. Um, getting to 200 runs, for example. And uh, we have not seen a lot of teams getting there. As a matter of fact, we have only seen uh, uh, the 200 mark being reached four times in this tournament so far. And surprisingly, one of those teams uh, to get past the 200 mark was the Leeward Islands against Barbados on Wednesday. They batted for their 50 overs and scored 255 for five. And the Barbados chased that down quite easily with uh, time to spare. 256 for five Barbados um, from 46.2 overs. But Guyana certainly has started well here. They, they have not given much away. Uh, they're keeping things in check uh, as reflected by the score. Uh, Jamaica going at just over one run per over. As this over comes to an end, another uh, Millington over, another good one. We do have a bit of an overcast here at the St. Paul's uh, Sporting Complex. We see the groundsmen are standing uh, pretty close to the covers. White signal there by umpire Abbott. Uh, this should run away for four. It does. A uh, cut uh, past the to the left of backward point and down to the boundary for four. So, Betty Meyer guilty of being a bit too short. And outside the half stump, and uh, uh, Nation is not going to miss out on that one. She gets off the mark with a four. Uh, Shadi Nation, of course, a very aggressive player. And uh, once the bowlers miss their, 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 their length, she's going to uh, capitalize. Here's another good drive. This time, uh, just a single.
So five runs coming in this over so far. In fact, six runs there was a wide. Uh, probably the most expensive over so far being sent down by Ghana. Another good drive this time by Williams. Uh, but uh, Midoff is in the way. And uh, she can't score. Eliana Grimman, of course, the field at that time at Midoff. <coughs> Dug out by Williams into the offside. Weather has been very good um, throughout uh, the uh, five round matches, the five round of matches. We, we just lost some five overs on Wednesday. And here's a quick single. As Gajna be tied, he's up at mid on. Of course, and that was due to the fact that we had quite a bit of rain on on uh, I keep saying Wednesday, in fact, on, on Monday, we are, uh, today, of course, is Wednesday. And here's a good shot. <laughs> Lovely shot indeed there by Nation. True cover point for four. Uh, finding the gap and really uh, the ball raced across this ground and down to the boundary for four. So Nation picking up a second boundary and looking good, looking dangerous at this point. So, on Monday, of course, we would have lost some five overs. And uh, uh, it was uh, reduced to a 45 over per side match. But apart from that, we have had, uh, we have had good weather. We have been able to have full matches. Quick single, turn. Eludes Millington. In fact, she's wringing her hands. Must have taken her on the fingertips. And uh, they were quickly through for a run. So, uh, Jamaica stepping up the tempo a bit at this point. has a slip of backward point. She has a cover mid off. And on the on side there's a deep mid wicket. There's also mid on short mid wicket, short backward square. So the cover's coming on at this point. There seems to be a bit of a drizzle. And uh, of course, anticipated the groundsman, of course, for some time, uh, really hanging around the covers and, uh, and expecting a, a bit of a drizzle. But I suspect this one is not going to last too long. Uh, just probably a passing shower. Uh, there's a bit of cloud cover also. There's a bit of cloud as we look out. <coughs> uh, 
as you can see there, as we look out ahead of us, there's a bit of cloud. But that's not where the rain normally comes from, though. Um, the rain comes from more to our right. And, uh, but there seems to be some cloud about. But uh, covers are on. And uh, just a slight drizzle. It's not really pouring. And uh, perhaps uh, we could take a, a break at this point. Well, after a very short break, uh, play about to resume. The umpires are, are back out. The stumps are back up. The uh, Guyana team heading back out, uh, as well as the two uh, batters for Jamaica, Shadi Nation and Rashada Williams. They are going out to uh, the middle. So play resuming in a while. And we are hoping that the weather stays good 
uh, for the rest of the day. And it was a very short break indeed, so it will not affect uh, the overs uh, at all. Maybe a five, ten minutes break, perhaps, if that long. Ground here at St. Paul's, well kept, well manicured. And some very good pitches too. Perhaps a bit a touch on the uh, slow side. And we have seen teams eager to bat first. Uh, the other day, on Monday, we saw the Windwards winning the toss and a track which might have had a bit of moisture in it. They, they, they opted to take first knock. They, of course, would have lost that game. So, Nation, the two battles, of course, for Jamaica having to uh, we settle after that short break. Of course, no, no batter really likes to uh, be coming off uh, and going back on. Uh, for any interruptions, could upset their concentration. But Campbell is after this one and uh, uh, sends it back to Mango. So perhaps Campbell deciding to take a little rest today. She's at slip, she's the captain. And allowing young Mango to uh, take the gloves today. Campbell, of course, a very versatile. Oh, poor bit of fielding there. At, at cover. In fact, the ball eluding the, the fielder. Uh, Campbell, of course, uh, we know she um, is the captain of the guy and his team. She is also a wicked keeper and she. He's also a capable bowler. In the past, he has done some leg spin bowling. Um, so, a very talented and versatile player, uh, Shemin Campbell. Uh, we are seeing the first bowling change from the uh, pavilion end. So, Reti Maya has been replaced by Gajna B. Tall, slimly built player. Reti Maya, of course, picking up the first wicket. Worked into the onside. They should get two good run in here by the uh, Jamaica batters. Two runs to Rash Rashada Williams. Good runs turned down to square leg and... Uh, Running the first one rather quickly, uh, which allowed them enough time to get a second run. Of course, the field had to chase the uh, two left from short backward square. More runs here for uh, Jamaica as it's played uh, just slightly backward of square for another two. So, Gazna be the first bowling change for Guyana. And uh, immediately we see some changes to the field. Slip has been taken out. Uh, the captain Campbell, she goes to square leg. Uh, four runs coming from the first two deliveries in that over. But here is another nice shot by Williams. In fact, they're going back for the second run on the arm of the fielder down there. Uh, Millington, good running here, good aggressive running here uh, by the Jamaican batters. Another two runs, putting pressure on the guy and his fielders. So, it's obvious that 
Shada Williams thinks that she has seen enough. She knows how the pitch is playing, so uh, she's looking for runs now. Jamaica yet to lose a match in this year's competition. They have won all uh, four of their matches. Yeah, it's a sort of wild uh, swing there down to uh, backward square by Rashad Williams. This time it's just a single. Uh, Scambell has to uh, retrieve and uh, just the one run. So, Gajnabi first over comes to an end. It was an expensive run. Some eight runs coming from that over. And uh, uh, being rather expensive. Uh, the batters, of course, uh, are looking to rotate strike, looking to work the ball around. And they're picking up some eight runs in that over. So, good batting here by Jamaica. Millington will continue from the far end. Misses an over pitch delivery. M might have taken on the pad. There was no signal uh, from the umpire. Umpire Labor at the far end. Umpire Abbott is at square leg. of course a, a very aggressive uh, batter loves to go after the bowling does so now but just a single as it goes out to uh, mid wicket and finds Retimai in the way just a single <coughs> time Millington is uh, uh, giving it a bit more. He's slowing it down a bit. was driven up to uh, mid-off by Williams. It was in the air for some time, but uh, well away from the mid-off fielder. Linton has kept things tight for uh, the guy on the team as she comes as another over comes to an end. Gasnaby will continue. From this, the uh, pavilion end. Taking on the par, the appeal goes up. Umpire Abbott 
remains unmoved. Nation, of course, coming into this match. Um, second on the run list, having amassed some 172 runs. And uh, gets a boundary here down to backward square. Uh, so four runs to Nation. And she has been having a very good tournament. And uh, with that four, uh, she would have moved on to 16. So, so far she has accumulated some 188 runs coming into uh, this match in second place in terms of runs scored and 172 runs. Of course, the leading run scorer in this uh, year's tournament so far has been Kaisian Knight, who has been rather prolific. And at the end of round four, she had scored 208 runs, amassed 208 runs. Up to cover for a single. Danelia Glasgow for the windwards. Uh, uh, she would have had uh, amassed some 166 runs. And uh, the captain for Ghana, Shemaine Campbell, she has amassed 160 runs so far with Stefani Taylor for Jamaica in fifth position with 142 runs. Of course, this is going to change at the end of the day. As we see some more good running here by the Jamaican batters, another two runs. Uh, this time to Williams. And of course, we have had uh, some good scores. Rashada Williams herself, she, has scored, she scored 17 in the last match on Monday. As uh, the first play comes to an end, 10 overs completed. Um, Stefani Taylor, she has the highest score for the season, 99. Uh, just one one short of 100. So we have not had any centuries uh, yet in this year's tournament. And who knows, uh, today might be a good day for someone to uh, score 100. Chanel Henry, Henry, who's not playing in this match, she uh, would have scored a 93. And Kaisia Knight, a 90. Kishona Knight, 88, not out. Uh, the other uh, sister. And of course, Rashada Williams having scored a 72 in the last match she played. So it would be nice if uh, on this final uh, day of the Super 50, the CG United sponsored uh, West Indies Women's Super 50, if someone could get to uh, that landmark, 100. This, of course, does well for uh, <coughs> the regional women's cricket if, if uh, players could, could get to such landmarks. I mean, we have seen uh, three players getting close, but not uh, crossing the, the line. Uh, but it would be a fitting end to the tournament if someone could get 100 uh, in one of these matches today. In terms of wickets, Bamara uh, from Trinidad and Tobago, she's uh, she was leading the pack coming into this round. She would have picked up some ten wickets. Uh, Munisa from Ghana, uh, we have not seen her yet uh, in this match so far. She has picked up nine wickets so far. Latchman also of Ghana, she has picked up nine wickets, and uh, Watts for Jamaica eight. And Ramnath for Trinidad and Tobago, the uh, teenage player, 15-year-old. She has picked up some eight wickets. Tempted sweep, white signal. And uh, surprisingly, uh, Chanel Henry is not playing in this match. She got a hat-trick in the 
last match against the Winwood on on uh, Monday, in fact, and she picked up six wickets in that match. She's not on the list uh, of top wicket takers, at least not in the top five. She's not playing today, so her tally remains uh, as it is. So the over comes to an end. And it's 36 for one. As we look at the ocean, and of course, one would have to put on the eagles uh, to see um, Sabre in the in the background. You could see the outline today, which suggests that scene is good. White runs on. She's not playing today. She has been left out of the uh, Jamaica team. Uh, in fact, we're looking at Sabre um, in the distance there. One of the two nearby islands. Stacia, of course, is on the far left, which we, it's very difficult to pick up from this point. Poorly. Uh, line delivery. In fact, the length is bad. And uh, Williams is able to get it down to a uh, fine leg for two. And are searching for a second wicket. Uh, just the uh, one wicket going down. <coughs> and that fell when the score was on six. Uh, so these two stitching together a good partnership for uh, Jamaica. Shot and pulled away. Just a single. In fact, we, we had Grimon uh, replacing Gajnabi at the, in, for this over. So the over comes to an end. It's 41 for one. As we look at the groundsmen, they're standing, they, they have just made their way uh, towards the covers. And perhaps they're seeing that there's a, a threat. We are not in a position to really pick up the area from where the wind comes from, but certainly the groundsmen, they, 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 they would have picked up that. Um, some of the groundsmen, of course, being local lads. Um, so they would know the existing condition here at the St. Paul Sporting Complex and they will know when to expect rain. In fact, as you look, as we look out, 
uh, we can see some cloud cover that of course uh, is not the area from where the rain comes from but uh, it's just that uh, perhaps you know there's some cloud uh, about um, in other areas as another bowling change from the uh, far end uh, ringing the changes here uh, she may in camp and looking for a wicket and uh, it's Munisa who uh, now comes into the attack from the far end. We've had one short interruption earlier on. This one is a uh, wild swing there by Rashada Williams across the line, beaten outside the off stump. He was looking to swing it somewhere into the mid wicket region and uh, missed it completely. Speaking of uh, Munisa, uh, she has the second best bowling uh, figures in this year's tournament. Uh, five for 15. Um, Chanel Henry, of course, with that hat trick, picking up six for uh, 31 on Monday as the uh, umpires beckons towards the groundsman. We've had other good performances with the ball by Millington of Guyana. Also, she has picked up four for ten, and then Gordon for Barbados. She picked up four for nineteen, and Ram Harak for Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, she had four for twenty, and uh, the umpires they are calling the ground staff on. They are bringing on the covers. And we will have another interruption. And I suspect it's going to be another short interruption. And not the sort of interruption that batters would enjoy. But nevertheless, uh, the umpires are not taking any chances. Uh, the juice is down. And uh, they are securing the pitch. Uh, so, with that said, we probably would take another... Uh, short break here.
Well, we're back here at uh, the St. Paul Sporting Complex. A play about to start after an extended delay. Uh, we are just about uh, over an hour's. We would have lost over an hour's play. Going off at just about uh, uh, 10.51. It's now after uh, 12. Uh, so we lost well over an hour's play. And uh, we're starting at 12.15. And uh, the revised playing condition, uh, conditions rather, uh, it would know, it is now 44 over fair, um, 44 overs per team. And the first session ends at 2.20. And uh, uh, there's an interval of some 30 minutes. The second session starting at 2.50. So, uh, Five, in fact, four overs would, four bowlers would be allowed nine overs maximum, and uh, a fifth bowler eight. And of course, uh, the power play now uh, is a nine over fear. Match ends at 538. So, uh, Jamaica immediately. Um, setting about scoring runs, single to each batter's on the resumption. The question is, how well the Guyanese uh, bowlers and uh, uh, feelers handle a ball which might become damp in the outfield as it goes into the outfield? So, Shanita Grimond starts after the, the break. Uh, so, going off at 10.51. And, uh, 10.51, that's... Uh, have lost just about an hour and uh, 24 minutes uh, due to persistent rain. The rain, of course, not uh, heavy rain by any means, uh, but persistent. In the air and the safe. So, just six overs per side lost. And still lots of over to play here. And we are hoping that uh, the weather uh, improves. In fact, it is, it is improving at the moment. But uh, we do hope that we do not get any uh, further interruption due to rain. Earlier on, we had a short interruption, just about five minutes um, for a slight drizzle. And uh, recently a more extended period. But Guyana coming back out and uh, starting with the spinners. Munisa is at the far end. Is down to square leg. Uh, just a single. Back, uh, ball overshooting the wicket keeper. Uh, Mango, of course, keeping wicket today for Guyana. So, just to repeat, it's now 44 overs per team. Uh, and those, of course, are the revised uh, match uh, parameters. First session ends at 220. And there would be a, an interval, a break of some 30 uh, minutes with the uh, second session, the, uh, the second half of the match, starting at 2.50. Uh, four bowlers, uh, a loud appeal, the finger goes up, and the nation is unaware. 
So, Ghana picking up an early wicket after the break, getting that uh, prize scalp of nation who makes her way back. Of course, this is what Ghana would have been looking for at this point. And all the wicket after uh, uh, the rain interruption. And Nation, of course, a batter capable of really advancing the, the scoreboard quickly. Captain Stefani Taylor goes to the crease now to partner uh, Rashada Williams. So it's a nine over power play and uh, no bowler allowed to bowl more than nine overs. Well, in, in fact, that applies to four bowlers. None allowed to bowl more than nine and then uh, the other bowler, uh, eight overs maximum. That, of course, would give you the uh, 44 overs. Things brightening up considerably here. Sun really out now. Although there's still some clouds around, some white clouds. Uh, but conditions are really improving. So, Muni start getting the break for Guyana. Perhaps that uh, break for uh, rain might have impacted uh, the batting of nations. She might have lost momentum a bit. And obviously, the break has done Guyana good. They have come back and uh, they have conceded some six runs and they have picked up a wicket. Uh, so, benefited from that break, Guyana. See the players moving around rather quickly, jogging into uh, their places. And uh, Shanita Grimmel will continue. Our feel, of course, will be a bit damp at this point. Pull the way down to uh, the backward square for single. The captain, of course, uh, uh, Shemaine Campbell. We're back on the backward square boundary. So we have a deep backward square. There's a mid wicket, a long one. We also have a cover sweeping. The rain, of course, might have slowed the outfield down a bit. As Campbell chases around uh, to a right, rather fleet footed. And uh, Stefani Taylor gets off the mark with a single. And Paul's, of course, could be considered to be uh, one of the rain belts here in St. Kitts. And uh, an area where, uh, area that gets quite a bit of uh, rain as the 50 comes up now for uh, Jamaica, 50 for two. So 50 for Jamaica coming up of 15.4 deliveries.
So the over comes to an end. Uh, Jamaica 50 for two, winning the toss and batting first. plays it uh, to the left of extra cover and to the right of cover and picks up a single. He's a good drive straight back to the bowler. Takes the catch and Stefani Taylor is on the way. My goodness. What a blow struck there by Guyana. Picking up the, the second wicket after the extended break. Uh, due to rain, uh, Taylor driving straight back uh, to the bowler, Munisa, who accepted quite gleefully, uh, rather easy catch. And Taylor goes uh, back to the, the, the pavilion and does he make lose his uh, third wicket. So the break certainly doing the win the uh, Guyanese team some good. They have picked up two wickets, and uh, they have only conceded some ten runs. This lets in Lena Scott uh, coming in for this match. So Scott will receive from Munisa a first delivery. Friends. Another over comes to an end, a successful one for Munisa. And uh, 51, it is now for three, Jamaica. Guyana fighting back at uh, the rain interruption. The Jamaican team, they were, were 41 for one. And they've lost uh, uh, two wickets since that in quick succession. They're now 51 for three. In fact, losing their second wicket at 50. And now losing their third wicket at 51. So Guyana getting the 
better of the exchange at the moment. The fielders, they're chirping, they, they have had success, they've picked up wickets, they've picked up the prize scalp of Stefani Taylor, and cock-a-hoop at the moment. So another over comes to an end, and uh, uh, just to repeat, uh, we have lost some time, just about an hour and 29 minutes or they're about in the match so far, uh, and uh, we had two interruptions due to rain. It was just about a five minutes interruption, and then an hour and 24 minutes interruption. Munisa from the far end. Single there as the return goes to the keeper's end. Mango is tidying up. When these two teams met last year at Warner Park, it was a low scoring affair. Uh, Jamaica, they managed to score 94 uh, from 40.3 deliveries. Uh, and Ghana won that match uh, by the Duckworth Lewis method. Uh, And in fact, scored 67 for 7 from 22.4 overs. Uh, so, Guyana, of course, would feel that they, they are ca quite capable of uh, beating this Jamaica team, a team which has not lost any matches yet in this year's uh, tournament. And uh, as the over comes to an end, uh, I'm pretty certain that uh, the Ghana team would be looking to uh, put a dent into that record, that unbeatable record for uh, Jamaica. And so far, they've come back and they've done well after the rain break. But Shanita Grimond will continue. Sun is really out now. But Williams is still there. She uh, uh, scored 72 in the last match against the uh, played here at St. Paul's against the Winwood Pick single. And uh, 
in the end safely home. Scott a bit slow off the mark. Williams was driving into the offside and set off immediately for that single. So, blocking the gaps here and uh, uh, bringing cover. Uh, the sweeper into an orthodox cover position, rather sh short, saving um, the one. Scott still kept off the mark, but here is a poor return, allowing a run. It was uh, thrown wide of the keeper and uh, allowed the batters to go through for uh, that run. Gajnabi uh, the guilty party that time, sending the poor return uh, to Mangu, the keeper for today. Oh, he is an almighty swipe by Williams uh, to a delivery pitched up outside the off stump. She missed it completely and uh, through it went to Mango. But rather losing the shape a bit there. This time she's getting baton to ball for a single down to uh, long leg. And uh, for Scott, uh, the sweeper, uh, Betty Meyer comes in from off the cover boundary into a short cover. She defends. So it's Munisa at the far end, and uh, the battle of horse uh, being uh, Rashad Williams. Two mid on and out. It was tossed up to Williams. She was driving, playing somewhat across the line, and down to uh, uh, mid on, uh, where the catch was taken by Gajna B. And uh, uh, Jamaica ca uh, capitulating here after the, 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 the uh, break uh, due to rain. And some key players are back in the hut. Shadow Williams has scored 72 in the last match going back now. And uh, she scored 31, top score so far. But McLean goes out now. She's an aggressive player. Uh, she would have gotten a half century in the last match against the Windward Islands. And even 50, as a matter of fact. But uh, Guyana certainly uh, fighting back. So Munusa will continue, defended by McLean.
This time it swung in the air for six. That's a good shot. Well timed there by uh, McLean. It was shortish. She was into a wicket and swung it over backward square for six. Feel it for one moment. Thought that she was in with a chance. That's Reti Meyer. But it was well struck. And uh, it went all the way for six. A wonderful shot indeed there by McLean. And uh, somewhere to get off the mark. So good blow struck there for uh, the uh, Jamaican team. Uh, they have been losing wickets since the, the rain break. It's now 62 for four. Ball is not back as yet. Interesting too, the Campbell had placed herself at first slip and uh, sensing that uh, there are wickets to be had here. So Munisa once more. Campbell removing herself from slip and going to a short backward square. Four weeks down for uh, Jamaica. And uh, we're hoping that uh, McLean stays there for a while. She's defending. So Shanita Grimman once more, this time from the pavilion end. So they have it. Uh, Jamaica losing another wicket, the wicket of Scott. And she goes for just one run from some 18 deliveries. Nina Scott. Jamaica. Losing wickets and losing them quickly. They're now 62 for five. Um, so spirited fight here by the guy and the team. They, they're really fighting back. Uh, and uh, that win break seemed to have done them the world of, world of wonders. They, they've come back from a position... Uh, of 41 for one, uh, uh, Jamaica. And uh, now we, they, they have conceded just some uh, 21 runs and they have picked up four wickets.
Jamaica needs a partnership and they need it badly here. Oh, there's a loud appeal. The Keeper Mango is uh, up and running and uh, the finger goes up also. And Jamaica loses another. This time it's McLean. So another big blow struck there by the guy and his team. Seems to have been caught behind. Off the bowling of Shadita Grimond. And uh, uh, they're really struggling here. The Jamaican team really capitulating at this point. As Watts goes to the crease. And this could be over in quick time. And uh, while, of course, we're looking at, looking at some 44 overs, uh, this, at this rate, well, it could be long over. We're in over number 21. And uh, the Jamaican team really struggling, really losing some quick wickets. So Grimman has joined the action. She has picked up a wicket. Even if the maker loses this match, they they are still going to win the tournament. But, on the other hand, uh, Guyana looking to up their ranking. Oh, my goodness, it's all happening here. Uh, as Watts makes her way back. So, Watts goes 67, 62 for 7, Jamaica. Really folding here and really uh, losing wickets at the blink of an eye. As where some goes out uh, to partner Bryce. My, my, my. What a difference an hour makes. Oh, no one twenty. Uh, four minutes, um, that rain break uh, certainly brought lots of success uh, uh, for the guy and his team. So, Munisa picking up a second wicket. She's in over number uh, six, and she has two for ten. Guy and his team cock a hoop at the moment. Last time these two teams met, of course, it was a, a low fo uh, scoring affair. Jamaica having scored 94 from 40.3 overs, and the guy now winning by the Duckworth Lewis method, um, scoring 67 for 7. From 22.4 overs. But it's kind of on top at the moment. Just to repeat, after the lengthy rain break, all on 24 minutes, uh, play. Reduced to 44 overs. And uh, at the moment, uh, the Guyanese team seemed to have benefited more from the rain break. Uh, they came back with Jamaica on 41 for 1. And they, and they have picked up some six wickets for some 21 runs. And this has been excellent 
uh, by the guy and his team. Munu Sa, who has been one of the destroyers so far. Uh, she has picked up three wickets for nine runs. Runs here for Jamaica, two of them. Rather noisy below us. Uh, support from the teammates of both teams. Munasa putting in a very good spell here for a team. Uh, picking up some three wickets so far. Over in Warner Park against Trinidad and Tobago, the Leeward seem to have recovered quite nicely to each 151 um, from 40.2 overs. And that's uh, thanks mainly to boys who got 14, uh, 48. So, he was an outside chance of beating Trinidad and Tobago, but we have seen that their bowling has uh, lacked the skill, lacked the penetration uh, to contain teams. Trinidad and Tobago, of course, looking for their uh, first points in this year's tournament. Lee was having uh, picked up two bonus points in their match on Monday against uh, Barbados when they scored 255 for five. Barbados, of course, playing the win was at Connery. Jamaica finding it difficult to score at the moment. Windward's doing quite well. They are 181 for four from 42 overs. So on target to get some bonus points there uh, for batting. Captain Fletcher, of course, not out on 72. Uh, so doing quite well there. Zadia James, the vice captain, she's not out on 24. And Marceline, she scored 30 earlier on. But back it's uh, Shanita Grimman, who is in the attack. And the ball in from this, the pavilion end, in fact. Uh, dead ball signaled there by umpire Abbott. Two runs, two runs there to Bryce. Two important runs also. 
It's now 67 uh, Jamaica uh, for seven. In the air, but not close to any fielder. Quick single, well run. So Jamaica, they have lost Ferron, caught Mangu. Baldwetty Meyer for no score. Shada Williams, she was caught. Gajnabi. Bold Munisa, 31. Shadi Nation, she was caught. Keeper Mango, Bold Munisa, 20. Stefani Taylor was caught. Munisa, in fact, um, she was caught on bold by Munisa for one. Loud appeal there. Uh, Scott, she was run out, and she scored just a single. She was run out uh, by a combination of, in uh, fact, run out by Guimond for one, and McLean, she was caught mango bold, uh, Guimond for six, uh, so. That's the Jamaican scorecard, a pathetic looking one, beaten outside the off stump. New ball, of course, from the far in Schultz, left arm, left arm around, shorter, flatter, tugged into the onside by Bryce, just a single. Sun really out now. And the excellent conditions and uh, nice breeze blowing across the field also. So the outfield, of course, uh, drying up quickly. And uh, the ball is the, the. I'm not really being affected by the rain on the outfield. Ball seems to have stayed. Uh, dry. And we have not seen any of the players um, using the rag. Shorter. And a quick single. Every run precious here for Jamaica. Really struggling at this point. And Guyana looking to uh, tighten the screws, uh, looking to close off this inning. As Retimaya comes back. In fact, In fact, Latchman, Latchman, who has done very well this season so far, she comes back from the uh, pavilion end. Runs here for Jamaica, just a single. Jamaican players downstairs cheering on everyone. They, need, they do need them at this point. Really struggling at this point. They're into the 70s. And uh, uh, about seven wickets down. Latchman, who has been among the wickets for Guyana, she, um, she would have picked up some nine wickets so far in this tournament. 
at the Ramarak for Trinidad 10. Munisa, no 12 wickets. She would have picked up three in this match so far. Um, so she has gone ahead of uh, Ramarak. In fact, uh, certainly would have to check and see if Ram Ramarak would have picked up some wickets there against the um, the Leeward Islands, of course. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago uh, bowling out the Leeward Islands for 151 runs. Matchman over pitches. Might have taken the batter on the pad, no run. In the air, caught. Played back to the bowler and easily caught. Took it low down, uh, but rather easy catch. Easy catch there by Bryce to the bowler. And uh, Latchman comes on in the first over and picks up a wicket. So Jamaica really folding here. At the St. Paul Sporting Complex. And who would have imagined the team that has not lost the match so far are uh, doing this poorly with the bat. Ramarak, in fact, just picked up the one wicket against the Leeward Islands. Uh, so that one wicket they would take her uh, on to 11 wickets, which means Munusa is ahead. And uh, she is the number one bowler so far in the tournament, having picked up uh, some three wickets in this match so far. And uh, uh, she's now on 12, on 12 wickets for this year's tournament. So the leading wicket taker for uh, this tournament so far. Of course, Latchman, she's on, now on 10, having picked up one. Wisdom gets a single down to back out square. Latchman is quickly in from off the boundary to field. So Schultz from the far end. Very much a German name. Of course, uh, many of you who know that um, series Hogan Heroes will know that there's a Schultz uh, in, in that particular series. Uh, that old time series from way back. Still shown on some TV channels. But it's Diaz who is in strike. Um, she's yet to get off the mark. And she's bold. My goodness. She was swinging across the line of that one. Seemed to have struck the off stump. And she's on her way for a duck. Back swinging across the line. In fact, seemed to have played on. Uh, playing across uh, the line of that one. Poor shot. And being bold. My, my, my. Jamaica really folding here at the St. Paul's uh, Sporting Complex. They're now eight wickets down. And just so, some 74 runs on the board. So Schultz picking up a first wicket uh, in this match. 
And Ghana has come back after the win break with a bang. 41 for 1. When the, rain, when the rains came and the covers were uh, pulled on. And coming back an hour and 24 minutes later, it's now 74 for 8. Uh, so just um, some 33 runs and losing 7 wickets to Jamaica are uh, not good going at all. Uh, New Battle Garcia. Left hander. Plays it quite into the off side and then stylishly uh, rehearses a cover drive. Oh my goodness, that seemed to have been a drop catch. She was uh, fiddling that one outside the off stump. And the mango seemed to put it down. Yes. Easy catch there to Mango, who's the keeper for Guyana today. And uh, a floor. So Latchman would continue. And this year's picked up again in the first over. So. She has taken Natalia Wickets for this year's tournament to 10 now. Oh my goodness, this one is pitched outside the leg stump. And she's bowled around her back. We'll have a look at that one once more. Uh, that's Wissam. It's missed there by Latchman. Latchman uh, picking up a wicket. The first delivery of this over. Looking to sweep, bowled around the legs. So, my goodness, this is really disastrous here for uh, the Jamaican team. Team which has been undefeated in the tournament. And this is interesting. Both batters are walking away. In fact, in fact, all 10 wickets have been dismissed. It just happened so fast that I have not even realized that all 10 wickets uh, were down. Uh, so Jamaica really uh, losing their way. And that last wicket going down to uh, Latchman, who was picked up two. And she has taken Natalie for the season to uh, 11 wickets. Munosa has Take Natalie to 12. And the Ram Harak has taken Natalie to uh, 11. So, uh, change of position in terms of the uh, ranking for bowlers. And uh, Guyana doing well. Coming back after the uh, rain break. And really running through the lineup of the guy. The Jamaican team. So that's the position. Jamaica uh, being bowled out uh, for 72 uh, with a top score of 31 by Rashada Williams. And uh, we'll be back shortly with the second half of the innings. We might have lunch at this point. And then uh, the Jamaican team would come out to defend, but we'll take a break at this point.
Well, back here at the St. Paul Sporting Complex, we are about to see the second half of this uh, match. Uh, of course, the uh, Jamaican team was dismissed for 72 from 27.1 overs. And the top score of 31 from Rashada Williams. And we had Munisa picking up three wickets. Latchman, two. And uh, those were the main destroyers for uh, the Guyanese team. So Jamaica would need uh, some 73 uh, runs to win this match. And uh, they, they have all of uh, 44 overs in which to do so. And uh, the required run rate at the start, 1.66. He runs for over. Uh, so that's really easy sailing there for uh, the Guyanese team. Jamaica is out there. The batters for Ghana, they're out there. And uh, uh, it's what will uh, start the attack here for uh, Barbados, uh, she's bowling from the uh, pavilion end. So Vanessa Watts starting, defended. Schultz, the non-striker, uh, she's out there. Edged down towards a third man. And uh, looking for a second run is Mango. And Indian sent back by a partner, uh, Schultz. So Jamaica with just the uh, one field outside the circle. Schultz who comes in to strike. Schultz who uh, bowls left-handed. But he's a right-hand batter. Uh, Stefani Taylor, of course, looking to take wickets. There's a slip in place. Uh, she, in fact, is at for a slip. And then there's a backward point cover. Extra cover. There's a mid-off. On the onside, mid-on, short mid-wicket. Um, square leg, just about, uh, just a little more than three quarter way to the boundary. And there's a short fine leg. Timed well, but cannot find the gap. Uh, so Schultz is kept uh, on not. Seventy-two scored by Jamaica, and uh, of course they would be looking to defend this bad delivery, poor one, turned into the onside. Uh, just a single uh, to Schultz. Turning it back out of square for a single. Outside the off stump, a stumping chance. To, in fact, the back foot seemed to have been grounded, and stumps are broken uh, by Williams. Livery wide of the off stump. But Mango seemed to have kept that back foot in place. And uh, not a really confident appeal from the Jamaica players.
in the air down towards the third man boundary uh, slows up just inside the boundary and uh, two ones there to mango she gets off the mark with those two long chase there for nation shadi nation and uh, just retrieving just inside the boundary <coughs> So the first over comes to an end over which did not really challenge any of the uh, Guyanese batters. Just on about half stump and for most deliveries, for most parts, and looking rather ineffective. But we some would start from the far end, of course. Uh, the Jamaican team today missing the services of Chanel Henry, uh, who picked up a hat trick in the last match right here at the St. Paul Sporting Complex against the Windward Islands on Monday. Seems a long time away. Um, Chanel Henry, of course, not playing today. <coughs> At 6 4, she picked up a hard trick. We have some starts with a full pitch delivery, but not put away uh, by, by uh, Schultz. Wide signal also uh, by umpire Laborde at the far end. Wind has picked up here uh, in St. Paul's. And although there are some clouds about, there's just some fluffy clouds, really pleasant conditions. Jamaica, of course, if they are to win this match, they, they, they would be looking to bowl the guy and his team out. Uh, with just some 72 runs on the board, uh, it's very difficult to see them containing uh, the, the guy and his team. Oh, and she's taken, in fact, bowled! Bowled off stump by Wesson. So, uh, Jamaica drawing first blood. Knocking back that half pole of uh, Schultz and Schultz make a way back. So good blow struck there by the Jamaican team. Look at it. So I was just saying that uh, the Jamaican team would need to take wickets and take them regularly. If they are to win this one, Gaznabi goes uh, to the crease. And the way someone struck in the first over. Seventy two runs, very uh, low total. Uh, but we have seen low totals posing problems to uh, teams in this competition. Last time these two teams met, it was a low scoring affair with Jamaica just scoring some 94 runs from 40.3 overs. And then Mr. Duckworth Lewis uh, came into uh, the question. A guy in a one, uh, having scored 67 for seven of 22.4 overs. And, uh, you know, looking at that. Looks a little baffling. You wonder how um, come a team made 97, 94, sorry, and a team losing seven wickets for 67 runs winning. But uh, that's, that's the way the cookie crumbles in terms of the Doc Ward Lewis method. Uh, 
Um, something I've never really understood and never really tried to understand. Uh, the, the experts who uh, do these calculations I'm sure based on uh, the formula, uh, they would get it right all the time. And so we just have, would have to accept uh, what the formula serves up with some. So there's a square leg and a, a long leg in place for Wissom. Square leg perhaps for uh, anything short. Take down the pad, uh, louder peel, that one obviously going down the onside. And perhaps striking Gajna Bihai also. And uh, of course to make a uh, uh, being a bit buoyant, being buoyed by that uh, blow struck there by Wissam in, in the first over. And with a score of 72, I'm pretty certain that they would be appealing for uh, virtually everything. But it's what will continue from this end. Round arm action and uh, swept down to uh, square leg for a single. Um, Ferron is down there. She uh, feels well, sends a good, strong return, just a single. Nicely played, but straight to the fielder. Uh, Nation feels well at backward point. Tosses up, driven, not timed. No run. Target, of course, 73 to win this match. Jamaica, of course, already a uh, champion in this year's tournament. One more to the score. In fact, uh, it seems to be an injury. A uh, player is down. the emergency feelers and uh, uh, the physio uh, therapist going out there. Uh, looks like Bryce from this distance, but uh, we'll confirm that in a moment. She's back on her feet. She seemed to have sustained some injury f um, to one of her hands. In fact, she's uh, coming off the field at the moment.
See the physio holding uh, her left hand. Probably a split webbing. Uh, she makes her way off. Seems to, to be an injury to the hand, to the uh, left hand. Perhaps the, um, somewhere in the area of the fingers, uh, probably uh, the webbing. Uh, but play will continue. Mangu is swinging, coming from Pat going down to short fine leg. And uh, leg by signal. Shot, four runs, uh, driven straight back past Watts, the bowler, and down to uh, the long off boundary for four. Uh, McLean just jogs after it to retrieve, and a good way to end that over there by uh, Mango. So Wilmot, Wilmot is on. Uh, the field for Jamaica, the emergency fielder. So another 61 runs uh, needed by Guyana to win this one. Uh, Jamaica needs another nine wickets. Oh, is a dab outside the off stump there by Mangu. Eluding the outside ed edge and going through to the keeper. Edged uh, down to short third man. Yas is feeling, feeling well. Straight door. Easy work, actually. But she did it well. Now she's retreating. Um, she's going back onto the third man boundary. And Wilmot comes in from off the square leg boundary and goes inside the circle into a a uh, short square leg. And ironically, it's played into that area where Wilma just came from and down to the bounce of a four. Uh, so rather ironic, uh, they uh, took Wilma from off the square leg boundary and decided to protect the uh, third man boundary. And here was Mango swinging and they're getting probably a thick inside edge. And the ball going down to uh, this, uh, the square leg bounce even for now we see <coughs> Garcia being called back into a uh, short third man position and will not be placed on the square leg bounce forward of square in the block hole kept out there by Mango and gets a quick single <coughs> Target 73 for Guyana. They've lost the wicket, but they're 17 for one. Mm. 
the black hole once more. Over pitch driven powerfully back past the ball of a four. Wonderful shot indeed by Gajnabi. It was overpitched and she drove it uh, just wide of the uh, bowler, drove it on the onside and down to um, the long on boundary for four, drove it rather straight. Powerfully struck there by Gajnabi. Four good looking runs. So Guyana responding and responding well. Just, uh, I'm just losing the one wicket so far. Seventy four to win? Okay, okay. So okay. okay thanks. I've been told that the actual score needed to win is 74. Uh, so, correction in the score there. Um, an adjustment. So, Jamaica would have, uh, would have in fact, made... Okay. Not a nice shot here by Gajna B. Going out towards the extra cover boundary. Stops just inside. And uh, Gajna B picks up two as uh, Gilbert sends the return back to the keeper's end. So Gajna B looking rather businesslike. In the air, well caught there by Wesom at mid on. My word, it was driven in the air by Gajna B. Down to mid on, and she was diving forward, Wesom, and taking it inches from the ground. A wonderful catch indeed. And uh, they say catches win matches. And Wesom might have given the team a chance here. Runs on the board, runs on the board. Gaz may be probably playing one attacking shot too many and paying the price. So Jamaica picking up their second. What's of course the, the bowler. She has picked up her first uh, wicket. Has been guilty in this spell, though, of uh, being uh, uh, too much outside the off stump and uh, probably bowling a bit too short. And of course, if if Jamaica, if they are to win this one, certainly they would have to keep attacking the the batters. The hope that the the batters could make would make some errors. It's still a, a very good batting track. Uh, Liliana Guimon is the new batter. Oh yes, this one could be close. The appeal goes up. My word. Uh, well, well, well. That seemed very close indeed. Um, she was neither back nor forward. It seemed to have been struck in front, but perhaps she might have gotten something onto it. 
looks rather good, probably. Well, my, 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 my eyes are not as good as my good friend Visham. And uh, that looked very old to me. And Visham confirms that he thought that one was out. My word. Well, well, well. But this one day is a mix-up. And uh, in the end, uh, the batters were able to get back. Uh, but uh, Williana Guman certainly get, getting away with one there. Umpire, of course, uh, not raising that dreaded finger. And uh, she survived. In that case, being uh, umpire Abbott, and uh, she certainly was uh, neither back nor forward, and seemed to have been struck in front. And uh, the Jamaican fielders they couldn't believe that one, um, couldn't believe that that was not given out. But uh, they continue to fight on, and this could be a very close one here this afternoon. In the air, but safe. We'll mark the emergency fields went on. And already she has had a bit of work to do. As we some continues from the far end. 74 the target. Well, uh, the Jamaican feelers, they, they seem to be appealing for everything now, uh, you know, whether or not it's uh, from bat. Perhaps sensing that uh, uh, wickets are around the corner, sensing that another wicket or two could really give them the ascendancy. Taking on the part, the appeal goes up. And uh, looks a bit leg sideish to me. Seems as though it was going down the onside. Yes, very much so. The so pressure being mounted on uh, Grimond. Pressure being put on Guyana. And Jamaica is not going down without a fight here today. They, uh, they uh, of course, like true champions, would be uh, fancying themselves, fancying the, their chances of uh, bowling out Guyana. Oh, my goodness. Bold all over the place. And that is good bowling. It was right up in the black hole. And uh, Grimman never seems to be, seem to be comfortable out there. Played all over it. And the poles were knocked back. Good delivery. Right up in the black hole. Angled into um, the right-handed Grimman. And a good wicket there for Jamaica. So, uh, three wickets down now for uh, Guyana and Jamaica fighting. Captain, of course, who has been in some good form, goes to uh, the crease. Uh, she mean Campbell. And, uh, of course, coming into this match, she had amassed uh, some 160 runs. And uh, she was one of those uh, batters in the top five in this year's competition. And so she would be looking to get some runs here and looking to win this one for our team. Uh, so we are at a very critical juncture of this uh, game here this afternoon. And a lot depends on uh, the performance of uh, the captain, Shemaine Campbell. If Jamaica could uh, prize this one out as quickly as possible, I 
than they could fancy themselves. So, uh, we threw it down already. Um, but he's a good shot. Wonderful shot. Was shortish and pulled around down to long leg for four. Lovely shot indeed uh, by Campbell. The shot of a batter in form. So, good way to get off the mark, uh, Shemaine Campbell. That, of course, was the last delivery of the over. But perhaps Wayson, Wayson was up in the black hole and the new batter, Campbell, she was a bit short, a bit too straight, and she was pulled around. One would have thought that she would have gone for the black hole once more uh, to the new batter, uh, Shemaine Campbell, but she did not. And she erred in line and she erred in length and she was put away uh, for four. Watts will continue. My goodness, this is a poorly line delivery. It's uh, outside the leg stump. The keeper is appealing. And the batters are through for an extra run. It's a wide signal by the umpire. And uh, two runs effectively. <laughs> Good quickie there by Camp. Campbell just playing it. Uh, just to the right of mid on and uh, to the left of short mid wicket and picking up an easy single. Edged and uh, knocked down there by uh, Stefani Taylor at slip. Yes, uh, Stephan, Stephanie Taylor dive into her right. The ball dropping just in front of her and to her left, her wrong side. No real chance of a catch that time. But Mango has been there from the start. This one turns back into Mango. And in the end, she kept it out well. It's big swing and a miss. Taken behind by Rashada Williams. So Mango, uh, perhaps losing it a bit, perhaps losing concentration, and perhaps the pressure getting to young Mango. Of course, uh, this is a low total, and uh, uh, the Guyanese team would be hoping that some common sense would prevail among the batters. It's not a big chase by any means, and... Uh, they just need another 41 runs. Of course, uh, Jamaica need, they need another seven wickets. Nation is brought into the attack from the far end. With some rested. Of course, 44 over match. And 
Good Islands, they're picking up some some batting points. I'm uh, scoring 234 for nine. And uh, Fletcher Force scoring 73. Barbados, of course. 13 without loss, Barbados. So Fletcher, the captain, wants to get in some runs. He has been among the runs uh, for a team. Nation. Last time I saw Nation bowling last year, she was uh, just more or less floating it up. But this year, she seems to be uh, pushing it through a bit more. Driven back to her. And she puts on her head as uh, she grasped it. Perhaps uh, played into the ground uh, by Campbell. And uh, not taking it on the bounce, but in, in the end, uh, uh, preventing any run, knocking it down. So, winwards to 34 uh, for nine against Barbados. Barbados uh, again conceding runs above the 200 mark. Good delivery from Watts. But we saw against the Leeward Islands, they were able to chase down 255 on Monday. Windwards, of course, would have a much better uh, bowling attack. And the, the Windwards, of course, a team that fights. Swept in the air. Over Garcia's set, going out towards the long, the uh, long and boundary, and uh, they're back for the second run. So Barbados uh, with a target, a uh, uh, fight on hand. Understand that. Kaiser Knight might have sustained some injury. Uh, as to whether or not she would be batting, that's another question. And in fact, she's batting. Um, so obviously that injury was not too serious. And with the T20 blaze coming up, we, you know, we would not like to see any of these players getting getting inju injured. Platter, quicker, punched into the offside by Campbell, not finding the gap. <laughs> and here we see what's floating one up to Campbell, uh, uh, looking to temper, trying to tempt her into. A fault shot, but um, Campbell is up to is up to it. She just defended. <coughs> of course, Lee Woods would be playing Trinidad and Tobago at. Warner well, Park, Lee was of course scoring 151. And uh, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, no doubt, would be um, responding at this point. We'll get an update of that score for you in a short while. Trinidad and Tobago would like to win this one. Of course, they, they have not uh, secured any points as yet. So, Leewards 151 from 40.2 overs. 
and uh, uh, Trinidad and Tobago in reply they are 46 for 1 so that's a good start there for Trinidad and Tobago nicely driven up to uh, cover but no run Ferron is in the way <coughs> swept and swept uh, down to square leg in fact it's missed there but uh, by by uh, in fact it's Wilmot who came off from off the boundary missed it badly but um, she was backed up there by Diaz, and they prevented what could have been four runs. Quick single. So Guyana just a little more than half we past the the, uh, the required target. And now the 35 runs needed by uh, Guyana. Campbell has looked good for so far. She's middling. Um, the balls and a lot depends on uh, Campbell being out there for Guyana and uh, Jamaica perhaps realizing that they need to uh, get a breakthrough here probably get uh, Campbell's wicket they've brought back ways from, from the the pavilion and from this end she started from the far end earlier on It's Mangu who is facing Wisdom. Starts with the white. Of course, uh, the Jamaican team could Ill, Ill afford to give away extras, give away runs. It's a small total that they're defending. Taking on the pad, obviously going down the onside. But Guyana is playing good aggressive cricket there. Quickly through for a leg by. And one more to their score. Uh, moving to the 40s now. In fact, 41 it is. Umpire Abbott stands there on one leg for some time. Awaiting the signal from the Pavilion, perhaps that leg has gotten tired. She has taken it down, but she's back up, back up goes the leg once more. And now she's satisfied that uh, her signal has been recognized and she goes back into a position behind the stumps. With some once more. Driven in the air, over, mid off, down to the boundary for four. Uh, that's a good blow struck there. Uh, by uh, the Jamaican captain Campbell uh, stamping her authority she's an experienced player um, she's an international player uh, she's the captain of the Guyana's team and we see uh, Midoff retreating to long off and let's see With some once more wide keeper has to really 
dive across, stretch across, uh, to rope that one in. Uh, so that shot really exerting some pressure on the way some. Campbell seemed to have taken charge out there in the middle. Short and uh, easy run. Pitchers played very well. Uh, not the quickest of pitches. Now we see long off being called back inside this circle. We some brought back to do a job, but so far has given her runs instead. Another single. is looking for one day but it's not on the captain is not interested uh, as the over comes to an end so just another uh, 26 25 runs needed In fact, it says 24 runs. Scoreboard has 25, uh, but I'm sure we'll get that sorted out. Now we might have seen the captain Stephanie Taylor into the attack. Uh, she need wickets and she need them quickly. Nice little dab there by Mangu, down to short third man, and uh, uh, she picks up a single. Quick single taken, turn is not a good one. Was pass a nation at the non-striker's end. Body language of the captain, um, Shemaine Campbell, looks very good. And... Uh, Looks very positive, exuding confidence, uh, suggesting that she feels that this one is in the bag. Let's see what Stefani Taylor will 
do at this point. She's calling for the ball. And in fact, she's bringing Garcia into the attack. Uh, so, ringing the changes, looking for wickets here. They do need wickets at this point. Uh, Jamaica, just another 21 runs uh, needed by Guyana. So both scoreboards and scorers in the pavilion agree now that uh, the target is 74 and another 21 runs needed. Uh, so everyone on the same page as McLean comes off and the White goes on to replace her, the emergency fielder. So Nation, Shadi Nation comes into mid-off. White, uh, big, strong looking, uh, fast bowler, emergency fieldsman now goes into uh, the covers. What is that extra cover? And we have the captain, Stefani Taylor. She is at first slip, Wilmot uh, is at backward point. On the onside with some mid on. Uh, Shadi Nation, she in fact is at mid off. There's a, a mid wicket in Ferron. Starts badly. Outside the off stump, wide. So just 20 more needed. Scott is on the backward square boundary. Bice, of course, uh, she is a short mid-wicket. Bice, who would have sustained an injury to her hand earlier on. One kept a bit low from Garcia. But kept out by Mango. Mango is on 21. Her captain is on 13. Garcia, left arm. Around the wicket. Swan is in the air, out towards mid-wicket. Uh, Ferran comes in, but uh, only to prevent a second run. Nineteen needed. Obviously, this is not going to be a tanti molo for here this afternoon. Uh, Guyana progressing towards their target quite easily. And this, of course, 73 runs was always going to be an easy target. Nicely tossed up there by Garcia. Uh, what defended well there by Campbell also. Tossed up so nicely. And uh, Scott is coming off the boundary to feel and just a single. <clears throat> In the air, one bounce to nation. Uh, and uh, uh, Mango survives. <coughs> so, McLean goes back on. And the white will go off.
So another 18 runs to win uh, Guyana. This match, of course, winding down. One of three matches being played today. In the final round of the CG United uh, Women's, uh, West Indies Women's uh, Super 50. T20 Blaze, of course, starting on Sunday. And all matches, of course, are scheduled to be played at Warner Park. It's coming rather easily for Ghana. Short punch pass cover. Should get at least two. As Garcia sends the return to the uh, bowler's end. Watching for the bowler who has been brought on at the far end. So, Guyana. Comfortably placed at the moment. Uh, just another 14 runs needed. Swung down to mid wicket, one bounce. Wilmot Fields, just a single. Thirty meter. Nicely turned around uh, down to Scott, just a single. So just two hits away, Ghana. Uh, two big ones, of course. They're now sixty two. Uh, for three, needing 12 runs. Or perhaps they might prefer to keep it along the ground and eat um, three fours. Yassi will continue. And it's obvious uh, the captain is not going to bowl today. Stefani Taylor with just some 12 runs to go. <laughs> uh, this field there by Wilmot at backward point but the single was on nevertheless Quick single, chance of a run out. Turn is not a very good one. We some of course not quick enough onto uh, the ball. Driven. Single. And obviously, Guyana is prepared to do this in singles. And singles are coming quite easily. Lots of time left in this match. In 
fact, they have another 30 overs after this one. It's a 44 over fear and uh, ricocheting from uh, way some and they're back for a second run and gets it in the end quite easily. So the required runs below double figures now, just a, a mere eight runs required uh, for Guyana to win this one. Straight to mid on with some it's feeling well, no run. And she's taking on the pad, the appeal goes up. And uh, umpire Abbott is not interested. And it would be inter interesting to see where that one might have pitched. Diaz is going to have a ball from the far end. So seven runs required for Guyana to win this one. As Diaz would get a first ball in this match. And gets a wicket with the first delivery. Right up in the black hole. And there was Mango playing all over it and being bowled all over the place. Off pole being knocked back. So, Jamaica celebrating a wicket at this stage, but uh, perhaps too little too late. Uh, 67 for four. Another seven runs required. Perhaps uh, Jamaica needs at this point a uh, uh, Chanel Henry performance, a uh, hard trick, probably a hard trick of wickets. <coughs> Shanita Guiman goes to the crease. Um, she replaces Mangu. So Diaz of a, a longish run, ball in the right arm, uh, medium pace. Picks up a wicket with a first delivery, a dream start for. And the block hole once more. The making players are excited. Uh, going past the bat on, on the, just outside the off stump to the keeper. So she's keeping it right up to the bat. This one is played nicely by Grimman for a first run um, down to fine leg. Uh, straight to Scott, but she's back on the boundary, so an easy single. 
tussen die te gewimmen. Six more needed by uh, the Ghana team to win this one. This one is driven in the air, caught. My word. And it's the price scalp of Shiben Campbell who goes caught by way of some at mid-off. Off the bowling of uh, 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 Diaz. And uh, another wicket going down there for the Ghana team. So perhaps Diaz uh, looking to do the hat trick here for Jamaica today. Um, really causing a bit of panic in the uh, Guyanese ranks. We need another eight runs according to the scoreboard. And uh, of course, <coughs> scoreboard at this point needs, in fact, six runs. Another 170 balls in which to do so. It's Munisa on strike. Uh, she partners Grimond. And uh, one big shot. Six runs and it's all over. And with that, perhaps giving my good friend Visham Lalman some time to go to the beach this afternoon. Played nicely. Captain Stefani Taylor is there at backward point, just moving slightly to a left to prevent any run. Uh, of course, if Guyana wins this one, they would. Uh, move up to some, at least on the table, they'll move to some uh, 17 points. Uh, Barbados, of course, uh, going up against uh, the Windward Islands there in Warner Park, uh, having to chase down a target of some 234 runs. They would be hoping to get those runs and the outcome of that of course would have some bearing on the, the, the standings in this year's tournament. Um, the winwards can if the winwards can win this one and they would have really secured two batting points, it would take them uh, to sixteen points. So if they can. Uh, so position on the table up for grabs here by, by these teams. Guyana, two more runs uh, uh, to the total. So Guyana, of course, would have a, uh, probably a maximum of just about uh, 17 if they win this one, and they're very much on course to do so. And, of course, would await the results in the other matches, well, in fact, the Barbados Windwards match uh, to determine uh, uh, what position they, they would fall in this table. Trinidad and Tobago, of course, they, the best they can do, of course, is to get some points on the table. And Lee was, of course, they do have two points, so, and uh, playing in their final match. No chance of them been in the top three, those two teams playing today, um, Trinidad and Tobago and the Leeward Islands. But it's Garcia once more. Four runs needed. Big swing into the mid-wicket region. Just a single for all that effort. By 
I shall need a good one. Minister will take strike now. Three ones needed uh, by Ghana. Of course, Guyana defeated Jamaica last year, and they're doing it again, doing it again today. This time a bit more convincing. They bowled them out cheaply. And now they're getting the runs quite easily. Big slash at one outside the off stump. Overcomes to an end. Three more needed. And perhaps we would very well see the match over in this in this particular over uh, from days. We would have picked up two wickets in the first over. <coughs> so we are winding down. We are coming to the end of uh, this segment of the uh, CJ United West Indies Super 50. Of course, we have been here, we have been stationed here in St. Paul's, enjoying the uh, ambience, enjoying the surroundings, enjoying the fresh air mix up here, but they would get it safely in the end. So, two more runs needed. Of course, we have been enjoying the food also. It has been very good here at St. Paul's. The lunch has been very good. Good cooks. And, uh, of course, they serve you with a smile also, uh, which makes the food taste even better. Big swing and a miss down the leg side. An extra. So one run needed here by Ghana to win this one. Weather has been kind for most parts. We lost uh, just about an hour and 29 minutes, just about an hour and a half uh, today in total. It was a very short break. And then uh, we had a lengthy one, which... Uh, the Ghana team seem to have benefited, and uh, Stefani Taylor calls all of fielders in, just one who needed to backward point to Stefani Taylor. Fields and there's no run. But that's been kind. We lost uh, some five overs on Monday, and that was due to weekend wind, uh, wind which would have affected the uh, pitch from both ends. But nevertheless, once play got started, it went right down to the end. And uh, we had a, a practically a full day's play edged to Taylor. At backward points, he feels no run. So we have had a good five days of cricket starting last week, Monday. And uh, play continuing every other day. This time it goes through. It goes towards the backward point boundary. They jog through for the single. As Nation trots after it to retrieve. It's all over. Guyana has won. They have beaten uh, their counterparts, Jamaica. And... Uh, uh, they have beaten them by some uh, six wickets. So, good victory there for Guyana. And uh, having come back after the break and bowling out uh, Jamaica for some 73 runs, uh, they got to it quite easily, just losing some four wickets. But uh, Jamaica celebrating nevertheless because uh, they would have won this tournament. And as the players exchange uh, greetings, I would just like to thank uh, my producer uh, 
was Vinod. Uh, Visham Lalman, who at times chimed in with some uh, very intelligent and very knowledgeable uh, commentary. Of course, I say thanks to uh, the head on show also, my good friend um, Vinod Man Mancham. And certainly, I would have enjoyed giving commentaries here at uh, the St. Paul's Complex <laughs> on these uh, female games. The Jamaican team, uh, despite the fact that they've, they've, they've lost, they're, they're quite buoyant out, they're quite jubilant. Of course, they would have won this tournament. And uh, uh, the only loss uh, to Jamaica, the only loss they lost to Guyana. So they won this tournament quite easily in the end. But I don't know if my good friend Visham have any parting words at this point. I've not heard from you all day. Well, Earl, it was a, a tough day at the desk. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I think it's late to say a good afternoon. But good afternoon nonetheless. And obviously, we see a, a comprehensive victory by the Guyanese over the mighty Jamaicans. But yeah, Earl, what, all in all, closing off my time here in St. Kitts, it has been a wonderful experience. The food, the people, and, uh, and the Jamaicans being the champions as well of this tournament. You can just see them, they're enjoying themselves here in St. Kitts, just like I did. And the entire crew did as well, Earl. The people, as I said, the food, the scenery, the beaches, everything is amazing here in St. Kitts. So thank you very much for the hospitality, Earl. And, you know, it was a great experience all in all. Yes, yeah, certainly a good experience and a good tournament. And uh, the, one of the shortcomings, though, is that um, the teams will not have made as much ones as we would have thought. But nevertheless, we, we would have seen some slight improvements in, in that uh, on a number of occasions. Uh, probably at least five occasions, we have seen teams getting past the 200 mark. And in fact, getting past 250. And Barbados chasing down uh, 255 runs on Monday. Uh, so, uh, obviously... Uh, some improvement in the batting, and we hope that it goes from strength to strength and that West Indies female cricket would continue to develop. Of course, we look forward to the uh, T20 Blaze, which starts on Sunday, and uh, we, the all matches would be uh, played at Warner Park. There are three matches per day, and it starts on Sunday, and I think we have matches, uh, I think it's Sunday... Uh, Tuesday and um, Thursday if I'm not mistaken we'll confirm that in a while but we do have the T20 Blaze starting on Sunday at Warner Park and we would have three matches on that particular day but it's goodbye from us here at the St. Paul's Recreation Ground as you can hear in the background Jamaica celebrating and uh, it was a pleasure being here.